the Atlantic Basin is trying its darndest to wake up for the month of July. I didn't think I'd be back in the weather center this quick, but I did promise you all if things were trending in the upwards direction, we'd be right back to it. So welcome back to the weather center, everyone. Happy first day of July. Today is officially July 1st. 2025 we're here at home base looking at the tropics looking at several spots in the tropics to tell you the truth and i do anticipate if things continue in the direction they've been going the national hurricane center homepage could be getting a little busier as we go through the first half of july and then especially on approach to august so before we get started, thank you so much for all your continued support. A huge welcome to all of our new subscribers. You all are fantastic helping us to grow the weather center community as we get deeper into the hurricane season. The first month is down and we can only go uphill in terms of activity from here, you know, naturally pending those intra-seasonal variables we watch out for. So before we get started, big thanks to everyone for all of your generous support. If you did just happen to find the channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. It would sincerely mean a lot to me and the rest of our community we've worked hard to build since 2023. There's going to be a lot of information headed your way, and just as I thought, and just as we expected, Mother Nature is going to be having me working overtime, and we're already here, already outside of our regularly scheduled programming. So please kindly consider hitting that subscribe button, joining the Weather Center community for some accurate, timely, and reliable tropical weather outlooks as we rock through July, getting closer to the peak of the hurricane season. Give that like button a little nudge. You have been awesome with giving the like button those nudges we need to get this information out to everybody and it means the world to have you all supporting me through this process as i continue to improve as a meteorologist and continue to hone in on what it is that the atlantic is doing for us and drop me a comment in the comment section down below if you're tracking this southeast entity closely for your fourth of july plans or if you're looking out east into the greater Atlantic because we have a couple of different signals we're going to talk all about. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Here's National Hurricane Center's homepage, 30% now. This is something we talked about yesterday, and I'm very thankful we are slowly but surely starting those incremental increases. We now have a 0% chance over the next 48 hours, but up to a 30% chance over the next seven days. Might not seem like much. This is still marginal probabilities for this thing to take on at the minimum tropical depression characteristics let alone a named storm but i have full confidence we're not done yet this is going to continue to go up and in fact models are suddenly falling in love with a tropical wave that is sitting near the leeward islands right now and is expected to move towards bermuda and i actually think before this week finishes up in fact before the end of the day today even we'll have to wait and see we're going to get another yellow blip in close proximity to our first one and they may actually nudge this off towards the east it looks like our global models are finally coming into a bit more agreement that this will be an east florida mid-atlantic coast type of situation here and then on top of that we're still watching these waves that are eager to come off of africa at this point and i'm honestly looking forward to showing you the latest velocity anomaly product from the euro it's looking fairly interesting so stick with me to the end here's a look however at rapidly intensifying hurricane Flossie. we got to go to the eastern pacific because once again we have a gorgeous hurricane Cane to thankfully admire simply on the satellite image. This is not expected to make landfall into any major landmass. By the time it starts to slowly arc back towards the north, making a run for the Baja Peninsula, it will be starting to weaken. We're going to run out of hot water beneath it. We're going to run out of those favorable characteristics out there in the eastern Pacific within the next 18 to 24 hours, and we will start to see a rapid decline in this system. You can see that here looking at the National Hurricane Center's latest projected path. As of the 12 p.m. Central Daylight Time update, we are expecting a major hurricane by early tomorrow morning, if not tonight, with as quickly as this feature continues to rapidly deepen. It is explosively intensifying at this point. Very similar to what we just experienced with Eric, but thankfully this is not going to make landfall anywhere. So we can rack up a couple more good ACE units out there for the Eastern Pacific hurricane season and say bon voyage to Flossie. Now, I want to keep this short and brief, so let's go ahead and get you to our Euro Ensembles. First and foremost, for our southeast area of interest, 
Really nice uptick in our ensemble products here. You can see a lot of the members really coming into solid agreement. And then, yeah, what's that? If you see my cursor there, what is that? So first off, we're looking at the Southeast, really good uptick in a multiple ensemble members. Pay no attention to the one that's all the way out there in the Western Gulf. That is an outlier for sure. We've got a mixed bag of possible solutions here since we are still waiting the arrival of that upper trough and cold front that's expected to leave that weak pocket of vorticity out over open water to fester and eventually become some sort of area of low pressure. And then if you look out there in the MDR, we're still seeing very small hints and whispers of some tropical waves trying to undergo a little bit of further organization as they push closer and closer to the Lesser Antilles. You come on over to our European AI Ensemble, still very grateful that we actually have this product now to use. We've been leaning on the AI model since last hurricane season. The AI model has had its fair share of wins, and now we're looking at the Ensemble output of this bad boy. And if you notice, also again, the AI counterpart to the IFS Euro is showing a really nice uptick in two separate signals here. I'll go ahead and draw those in for you. We're tracking a wave right in through here. And then obviously we have those fragmented remnants of the backside of a cold front that's going to be left behind by the mature wave we talked about during yesterday's update. And then as you go towards the backside of the model run, you notice again, we have some very weak members propagating through the pattern moving off towards the west on approach for the windward islands so not expecting any major development out of that area just yet we're still looking a little spicy in terms of our dry air and westerly shear out ahead of these bad boys so if they do make it into the lesser antilles and try to become a little bit more than just a highly amplified tropical wave they're going to get knocked down pretty quickly unless they manage to ride north of the Greater Antilles. If it can stay out of the Caribbean graveyard, as it's called, maybe it has a bit of a fighting shot, just like what we're seeing now. And in fact, really quickly, bear with me, I'm going to change the screen really fast so I can show you what it is that we're watching here for the Atlantic side. I know I'm derailing my briefing. I should have had this pulled up, but check this out, just so we can get a better feel for what it is that's going on out there. First off, to give you a little bit of a background of the southeast, here's our front right there. It's coming down. Today's only Tuesday. It will finally be in our general region by Thursday and then into 4th of July, which is why regardless of where you are, before anything tries to organize, we're going to be seeing our rain chances going up pretty generously, and there's going to be a lot of rainfall out there for your 4th of July holiday. This is that weak tropical wave in through here just a very weird discombobulated cluster of vorticity that's going to also lift north with the approach of an upper trough that's helping to support that line of vorticity there that's going to be your mid-level front stacking down to the surface it's on approach for the southeast and eventually that trough's going to help to magnetize the wave energy we have in the western tropical mdr pull that to the north and then we're going to kind of have a bit of what could potentially be not necessarily a breeding ground but just that favorable quadrant of the atlantic to try to do something our latest European model does a fantastic job of highlighting that as well. If you notice off the southeast, as that front comes down, we start to push a lot of that spin together into a broad area of low pressure. But then watch this little guy right there as well. We have the one-two combo here, a double barrel low setup. Could be a double barrel tropical cyclone setup if this continues to hold steady. We don't have all of our models in agreement with this just yet. The UK model, the Icon model, the Euro, and the Euro AI are the ones focusing in now on that eastern wave that's going to be moving in. All of our models, one way, shape, or form, still show development for the southeast, which is why before the end of the day today, even we could possibly go code orange with a 40% chance over the next seven days of development off the southeast coast. You take the loop a little further in time, and both of these systems start to get their act together. And then if you look here, we've got Chantal. Could this be Dexter? We're going to wait and see. These both have been trending for the last several model runs, and both are in our warmest SSTs, both sea surface temperature-wise and anomaly-wise as well. We've been watching the subtropics since before the hurricane season kicked off, and they are indeed delivering. Now, 
Rapid firing through our latest CANSIPS model. We did get this update in as well, and a lot of major meteorological sources out there, including something we've talked about for my new subscribers. Go back. Go back through my old live streams, my old videos at the start of 2025. We've been talking about this, and we are still continuing to see a trend with a positive North Atlantic oscillation down at the surface. Really good reinforcing surface high pressure over the Atlantic, and then we're watching for this anomalous ridging that could manifest itself over Atlantic Canada. That is still the trend for both August and September into portions of October. That's very interesting. And then on top of that, we're starting to see our lower pressures beginning to trickle further towards the south alongside some of our warmer sea surface temperature anomalies. If you notice, we now have some of the shades of blue extending through the MDR, the Greater Antilles, and into the southeast United States with higher pressure anomalies here still predicted by our CANSIPS model for the months of October, September, and August. I know I kind of went backwards there, but still, this is a fairly interesting pattern here. We're really going to need to watch this. And the reason I say that is we've also seen a pretty nice uptick in our precip anomalies. I'll give you a little bit of backstory for my new viewers. If you go back to the month of March, for example, and you look at the hurricane season, Below average anomalies for the United States, some action in the Caribbean. Below average anomalies for the United States, a more focusing of our action in the Caribbean, but a dry main development region in the tropical Atlantic. Same thing with August. September looks very quiet unless you are in the Caribbean or watching for those fish storms. October, November, and then it's an end game there with below average rainfall for pretty much everyone in the eastern United States for the hurricane season. You come to our July outlook, however, July showing above average rainfall and a bit more of an active ITCZ in the Atlantic. August, we're seeing the precip anomalies spreading further west right into our hot spots, the eastern gulf and up the eastern seaboard to include Florida. An even far more robust ITCZ if you look right in through that corridor in the MDR coming off of Africa. Same thing with September. We hold steady, looking at a fairly active wave train over the tropics. Same thing with October, and then by November, we're finally starting to retrograde into that fall transition season approaching winter. And to tie it all into a nice bundle, we did have an update on our Velocity Anomaly product. It looks like, again, I'm bullseye in the second half of July, folks. Mark this in your calendar if you're watching the hurricane season, watching these tropical updates the second half of July. We're going to get going. The Atlantic, I do believe, is going to start to wake up, and we're going to see some more frequent signals out there. And then look at August. Look at the return of our African standing wave just in time to kick off the peak of the hurricane season. Very interesting developments. We've got a lot to watch. July, as I've mentioned before, is going to tell us everything we need to know about the hurricane season. And before we close out, I just want to say another big thanks to everyone who has joined this community because I am going to continue to work very hard to keep us ahead of these new signs and signals that are lurking as we get closer to the peak of the hurricane season. And fun fact, for those of you who were looking at this hurricane season, thinking this could be below average, very quiet, the latest start in a long time, if we do realize Chantal and then Dexter out there over the central and western Atlantic, couple that with some of the MDR waves we've been tracking, outside of ACE, thanks to Hurricane Barrel last year, we will be ahead of 2024. So now we're just playing the waiting game. The chessboard is set. The pieces are moving. It's only a matter of time. Like I've always said, you just got to give it a little time. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've had a fantastic year up to this point. We're well past the hump. We're now into July, the home stretch to the peak of the hurricane season, and this month is going to tell us a lot about what August and September and October will look like. So stick with us, folks. If you're new to the channel, once again, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I'm going to keep it as real as I can with you all to the best of my ability. I'm still learning and growing as a meteorologist. I'm going to continue to focus lock in for you all and give you the information you need to keep your friends, family, and property ahead of the storm every step of the way. But we'll see you again soon. Until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.